me having to read your title. Okay. Uh, thank you for ahead. the introduction. Uh, my name is Peter de Wever, and first of all, I would also like to thank the organizing committee to give this opportunity to present a research work about topochemical engineering of cellulose carboxymethyl cellulose beads, a low field NMR relaxometry study. So our research group is focused on topochemical engineering for human health. This involves a topical chemical design approach, which involves designing 3D structures like um, pore architectures, uh, chemical surfaces, as well as stimuli responsive interfaces. But it also involves topochemical reactions. Now, bacteria, for example, uh, are highly influenced by their microenvironments, but by um, modifying interfaces like um, hydrogel surface, we can influence which products are formed. Another example is with enzyme immobilization, uh, the microenvironment may influence the activity of the enzyme, but also alter its specificity towards a certain product. Topochemical engineering is all about uh, controlled disassembly or fractionation and controlled assembly of fabrication or fabrication. So in the disassembly, uh, we start with biomass, which is then refined and processed into biopolymers, biomolecules, and biopharmaceuticals. There are a wide variety of applications of these materials, but we can further fabricate them in more advanced materials. In biofabrication, we can modify uh, polysaccharides by introducing some luminescent groups or some cationic charges. The same can be done with uh, fibers and biohybrids. It is possible to design carrier materials like capsules for drug delivery, uh, spheres and particles as a scrubbing material and lotions. It is possible to create gels like hydrogels, aerogels, and xerogels, or uh, surfaces like films, coatings, and sorbents. Now, we are focusing here on the hydrogel aspect because uh, the global hydrogel market is expected to reach uh, 31.4 uh, billion dollars by 2027 with a compound annual growth rate of 6.7%. In particular, uh, cellulose-based gels are getting increasing uh, amounts of attention because cellulose is an abundant biopolymer. It is uh, biodegradable and renewable, but it's also very suitable for multifunctionalization, which means that it is possible to attach different chemical groups selectively on the cellulose backbone. Yesterday, there were already some talks about uh, tempo oxidation, where a carboxyl group was crafted on uh, the carbon six, or a periodate oxidation, where the bond between the carbon two and the carbon three is cleaved, introducing aldehyde functionality. But recently, there are also some uh, new pretreatments and cellulose solvent systems which have been introduced. Earlier, there was already the discussion about ionic liquids. Uh, but an alternative to ionic liquids is uh, sodium hydroxide urea systems. By dropping these cellular solutions in a coagulant bath, it is possible to create beads with a diameter of about uh, two millimeters, but you can reduce the diameter of the particles by more advanced fabrication methods, like with jet cutting. So this brings us to the aspect of low field NMR relaxometry, the last part in the title. So in order to create uh, spin polarization on the sample, uh, or more specifically on water, uh, a, train, a series of radio frequency pulses need to be applied. This will create a perturbation of the spin states uh, from thermal equilibrium. And after a certain duration, uh, you will return to thermal equilibrium. And there are two types of relaxation that we observe. Uh, on the one hand, there is a longitudinal or spin lattice relaxation time. This concerns the components of the magnetization vector, which are uh, in parallel with the external magnetic field, while in transverse or spin-spin relaxation time, uh, these concern the components of the magnetization vector, which are perpendicular to the external magnetic field. Now, depending on the environment of the, the nucleus, um, it, you will observe a shift in the relaxation time which can be interpreted like an uh, in change in energy exchange between its environments, or also uh, an influence of uh, a change in the water mobility. 
So this brings us to why there is a need to get a deeper understanding between hydrogel and water interactions. So over the last decades, there was already a great interest in how fluids and uh, materials are interacting with each other. Now, generally, uh, it needs to be understood that there are two contributing factors. On the one hand, there is the geometry of the material, like the pore size and the pore shape, which has an influence, but also the material properties like this, um, the surface chemistry plays an important role. Now, with the low field NMR alexometry, we can look at how the hydrogen surface interacts with water by means of an energy exchange, which is related to the longitudinal relaxation time, also referred to as a T1. And we can look at the water mobility inside of the pores by looking at T2 or the transverse relaxation time. Now, what we have observed is that not much is generally know how water interacts with more complex systems, like uh, in a hydrogel, which is composed of multiple polysaccharides. Now, um, to look at the water interactions, we need to do, distinguish the different types of water which are present in the hydrogel. Uh, first, there is bulk water, which is the water which surrounds the hydrogel. Uh, it does not interact, but will uh, provide a contribution to the relaxation times. So in order to omit this part of the signal, uh, we take the hydrogel beads out of the water and gently remove all the surface water by gently rolling it over some paper towel. And this leaves the bound and unbound water. Now, Bound water is water which is highly interacting with the surface of the material. Uh, it's often a couple of monolayers thick, but it's also water which is constrained into micropores. On the other hand, there is unbound water, which is water which is still mobile, but only interacts weakly with the material. So then we go to the top chemical design of the hydrogel spheres. So this is a really great example of top chemical design because each step in the fabrication method will contribute to the final bead properties. Uh, first, polysaccharide solution. Uh, things that can influence the properties are, for example, the selection of the solvent system, whether you work with uh, an ionic liquid or with a sodium hydroxide urea system. Also, the concentration of the polysaccharides but it's also possible here to add functionality to the material by adding a secondary polymer or other particles. The coagulation bot also plays an important role. Uh, things that can influence the bead properties here are the selection of the coagulant, like working with an alcohol or working in an acid bot instead. The temperature of the bot plays a role as well as uh, the concentration of, for example, of the acid bot. Now, if you are looking at hydrogels, the drying conditions also need to be considered. Earlier, there was already uh, a talk where um, particles were air dried, which then started to contract due to the large capillary forces acting on uh, the pore walls and then bonification where all the pores fuse together. Now, this could be interesting for applications in cosmetics, but if you want to retain the pore structure of the materials, then critical point drying is a more interesting approach. Here, water is first replaced by liquid CO2, which is then brought to supercritical state and then converted into a gas. And last, there is the uh, aspect of uh, functionality, which can include a post-modification using a heterogeneous reaction, like the tempo oxidation or the periodate oxidation, uh, but it could also include a coating of the material. Now, in our work, we always worked with a 5% polysaccharide solution, uh, which was a blend of cellulose and carboxymethyl cellulose. And this was dissolved in sodium hydroxide urea at uh, minus 10 degrees. Particles were coagulated in two molars of nitric acid and dried using a critical point drying. So the reason why we selected uh, carboxymethyl cellulose is to add uh, carbox uh, carboxymethyl cellulose uh, carboxy carboxyl groups to the beads, but also we believe that the, uh, the carboxyl groups would influence the pore structure of the material. Now, looking at the surface of a cellulose bead, we observed a very fine mesh of cellulose fibrils, but observe also larger cavities in the sample, which contains 30% carboxyl cellulose in the initial polysaccharide blend. 
we also observed that there was a large difference between the surface of the particles as well as the cross section. Uh, and this can be explained on uh, during based on the coagulation. So when a cellulose solution droplets mix contact with the acid bath, there is a rapid uh, agglomeration of cellulose at the interface, uh, which will then create sort of a membrane and slow down the mass transfer between the core of the cellulose droplets and, this, uh, and the acid bath. This will result in much larger uh, agglomerates of cellulose in the interior of the beads. So then we look at the specific surface area and we observe that we get a value of about 420 square meters per gram for a pure cellulose bead. But the surface area reduces as the carboxymethyl cellulose content increases. We also studied the, the swelling degree of the sample, which is a measure for the amount of water um, the RA gel can absorb based on its dry weight. A cellulose bead only absorbs a limited amount of water, uh, about two grams of water per gram of dry material. But by replacing part of the cellulose with carboxymethyl cellulose, we greatly improve the swelling degree up to 17 grams of water per gram of uh, aerogel. This brings us to how the material uh, changes their interactions with water. So a first observation on the T1 relaxation times is an increase in the intensity of the signal. This is actually related to the increases in the, the swelling degree, because as more water is present inside of the sample, you will get an increase in the intensity. Now, we, what we will look at now is mainly the shifts in the T1 value. So if there is a stronger interaction with, between water and the bead, what we should observe is a decrease in the T1. But there's also a geometry aspect, uh, for example, the swelling. If a sample is becoming more and more swollen, fractionally less water is interacting with the surface and more and more of the water inside of the pores will start to behave like bulk water or only weakly interacts uh, with the material. So you would see an increase in the T1. So if we look at the graph on the right, where we have plotted the average T1 against the carboxymethyl cellulose quantity uh, in the blend, um, where we see a general increase. Now, the error bars represent the, the width of the distribution. So what this means is that swelling has a major impact here uh, on the energy exchange. On the other hand, there is the transfer relaxation time. Um, here, we also need to point on the fact that we had peak broadening of the 30% sample which indicates that there was a little bit of heterogeneity inside the sample. Uh, we observed that for uh, pure cellulose beads, we had a relaxation time of 110 microseconds, but this initially drops when we add carboxymethyl cellulose, then appears to stabilize somewhat and then increase. Now, this is a clear indication that here multiple factors are coming into play. On the one hand, there is uh, clearly an effect of the added functionality, which would mean that more water is getting immobile. But on the other hand, the increase could point on the fact that, uh, again, a swelling effect, that more and more water is weakly interacting with the material, so become more mobile. Now, because we had problem interpreting the results of the longitudinal relaxation time, we can instead calculate the surface energy parameter, which is related to the negative value of the T2 over the T1. And here we clearly see an effect uh, of the water accessible carboxyl group, that there is an increase in the interaction uh, between the hydrogel and water. But afterwards, uh, it appears that the energy remains constant. And this can have several causes. Uh, first, again, the swelling can come into play here, but also it is possible that part of the carboxymethyl cellulose is getting incorporated into a supramolecular assembly, which would uh, create inaccessible carboxyl groups. And it is also possible that a part of the carboxymethyl cellulose was initially present on the surface, but was oversaturated, and after the washings with water, it is possible that uh, due to the electrostatic repulsions, part of the carboxymethyl cellulose was removed. 
So to summarize, um, topochemical design is a great tool to engineer interactions between hydrogels and water. Carboxymethyl cellulose raises the swelling degree, but it lowers the surface area. Minor amounts of carboxymethyl cellulose greatly enhances the water interaction. And carboxymethyl cellulose provides larger pores um, after a certain uh, minimum amount, so after 5%, which greatly improves the water diffusivity, diffusivity inside of the sample. Um, I would also like to thank um, my promoter, Pedro Fardim, and all the co-authors of this publication, uh, which have significantly contributed to this work. And I would also like to thank uh, you, the audience, and I'm now available for questions. Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, very detailed work on, uh, on how water behaves inside cellulose aerogel, so very good. Um, yeah, so we have a couple questions uh, come in. Um, the first one is, uh, have you had any problems with uh, water NMR peaks obstructing peaks from the fibers so with overlap between, I guess, cellulose peaks and, and water NMR peaks? Um, usually there is much more water present inside of the sample. Um, typically, uh, the, there is, uh, the dry mass of a hydrogel bead is about 5%. Um, so uh, the amount, um, so the contribution of actually the hydrogel itself will be very low. And in general, um, because you have a solid material as a hydrogel, or the hydrogel material itself is solid, uh, it will not really display any influence on the the on the signal of the water. What we are looking at is uh, water and not the hydrogel itself. It's basically because water has a much faster relaxation time than your Indeed. gel yes. material. Yeah, yeah, um, and then. A question, whether the NMR experiments could be done with D2O? Uh, yes. So suppose that you actually want to look at the, uh, the hydrogel itself and not the water, then it's possible to uh, exchange all of the water with uh, D2O and then look at how the D2O interacts with the material because the material will start to exchange its protons. So you can study this effect in that case. Yeah. Um, well, I have a question then as well. Um, may maybe one you, you can expect. Um, salt, um, you can imagine that salt will, will affect uh, the water behavior inside your gels too. Is that something you're planning to do? Because if, if you use this in a, in a, um, uh, in a wound or, or a human environment, you, you will have to work in, in, in salty environments. So the effect of ionic strength. Um, uh, yes, but this is not something that we've actually tested yet. Um, but we do believe that uh, salts will influence, for example, um, the carboxyl groups. So it will influence the interaction between the carboxyl and the water. So it will have a contribution, but it's not something that we have investigated. Yeah, and then some something else that that, um, that struck me is inside the aerogel, you you probably have a certain pH. I have no idea how you could measure it, but do you have any idea what the pH inside would be? Because you have a high concentration of carboxylate groups, some of which will be protonated and others will not because of because of the local pH. Um, but is that something that you you have any idea about, or or via other systems maybe have been able to measure? Uh, no, we've not tested it, but this can be determined using a condometric titration. Is that, is that even inside the gel? Uh, what okay. is usually done is that once the aerogel is dried, it's completely crushed and then it's uh, analyzed okay. like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Okay, yeah. Um, those are my questions, and then uh, there's no more questions on the on the on the Slido. Um, I've asked those questions as well. So uh, thank you very much for your presentation. You um, have ended this session, and you, now we can all move. Um,